Hello all, Rick here today looking into one of Star Trek's myriad of stellar phenomena, the centrepiece for Star Trek Generations, the Nexus Energy Ribbon. This string of rolling radiation and energy is a wave of cosmic temporal energy that sweeps through the Milky Way on an elliptical orbit on a 39.1 year cycle. It was first encountered by Starfleet in 2293 on the commissioning voyage of the Enterprise B. The crew of John Harriman were responding to the distress call from the Elorian refugees fleeing the assimilation of their homeworld by the Borg. Two of their ships, the SS Robert Fox and the Lacool, were caught in the gravimetric wake of the Nexus Energy Ribbon, effectively being dragged along in the current of the storm while bolts of energy and ambient radiation levels threatened the vessels. The crew managed to beam out the survivors of the Lacool, including Soren and Guinan, but the Robert Fox was lost to the energy discharges. The fate of the crew remains unknown, but the Lacool survivors, at least for a time, experienced the strange effects of the Nexus itself. Any being that enters the Nexus, if they survive the approach, is transported into a realm where reality is shaped around them to create a paradise tailored to the individual. The Nexus too exists outside of linear time, which explains the high levels of temporal energy that wash out from it. Flying into the energy ribbon itself usually results in the destruction of the ship, as it cannot withstand the gravitational forces, chaotic blasts of energy and virulent radiation produced by the tear. Soren's research yields that in order to maximise the safe entry into this nexus, you'd have to be standing on a large planetary body that would easily weather the storm. Star Trek Generations ensues, so I'm not going to recap the entire plot here. This energy ribbon, after being encountered in 2293, passed out of Starfleet's range and off on its own orbital course. In 2332, it re-entered Federation space and according to apocryphal content, was monitored for as long as possible, even at the cost of another Federation vessel, the Ambassador-class USS Forrestal, which was pulled into the same conundrum that seized the Elorians. In 2371, it reappears like cosmic clockwork, although its course is slightly altered by the gravitational tampering of Dr. Soren. Its next appearance would be in 2410, which it does in the video game Star Trek Online, causing a whole new problem, but I'll save that episode for one of my story series. Another interesting thing that is noted about the Nexus is that because its contents exist outside of time with the rest of the universe, entering it at any point effectively means you've always been there and you can leave it again, if you wanted to, at any point along the ribbon's path in time or space. This lack of time reminds me of the realms like the Celestial Temple of the Bajoran Faith, where the wormhole aliens dwell, and it is a common phenomenon with differing planes of existence in Trek. Once you've entered into this nexus, a part of you therefore never leaves. Guinan calls it an echo of herself, forever a part of this strange realm. Incidentally, this is the reason given in some books and behind the scenes for some Elorian's strange connection to space-time. Although a quick disclaimer, this is not canon, only a theory, and often the following traits are attributed to simple intrinsic properties of being an Elorian. Guinan has displayed the ability to sense when time has been altered, perceiving temporal changes as things being wrong and this was because a part of her consciousness is forever removed from the natural flow of time. She is still immersed in the flow of time like the rest of us, but on some level she has a subconscious map of the whole river and how it should flow because her nexus-touched mind is forever hovering above that map and can tell when things have changed. I hope that analogy works. So, moving on to what exactly the nexus is, and I think I have a simple answer. The Nexus is most likely a realm of subspace, and I say that with more than just the nerve of techno babble behind me, so let's look at the proof. If you've seen my video of speculating on what exactly subspace is, which I highly recommend, I'm actually rather proud of that one, then you'll know just how strange a place it can be. We've seen subspace bubbles form and create pockets where reality is shaped by the inhabitants' mind and subconsciousness. The best example of this is the warp bubble accident from TNG's Season 4 Episode 5, Remember Me. 
In this event, Beverly Crusher is inadvertently captured inside a pocket created by a warp experiment, which creates a temporary dimension shaped entirely by her own mind. In this realm, it was a facsimile of the Enterprise, complete with fictional crew that slowly vanished with time until the pocket dimension began to collapse. We've seen evidence of the mind being able to shape subspace through willpower alone, such as the realm where Suspira and the Caretaker are originally from. These both very powerful psionic beings, the Nacine. So, there we have proof that certain layers of subspace are very malleable and based entirely on a subject's thoughts, a state of affairs that the Nexus shares strong similarities with. When Picard enters the Nexus, his mind has been consumed recently by thoughts of his lack of family, the death of his brother and nephew. Alongside the grief this understandably brought him, it made him very aware that the family legacy of Picard's would probably end with him. When he enters the Nexus, his first situation is to find himself surrounded by a large family that he knows was his. When Beverly Crusher was captured and placed into her own warp bubble by accident, it was unexpected, and she had been dwelling on the fear of losing those around her fueled by a recent conversation with an aging friend, Dr. Quace. The reality she ended up in was again shaped by her frame of mind. Initially, she didn't notice any difference in her surroundings, experiencing exactly what she expected, the Enterprise and its crew. Soon, however, people began to disappear around her, having never have even existed in the first place, a clear reflection of her fears upon entering this pocket dimension. However, the Nexus is always producing nice things. In many ways, it alleviates fears rather than acting on them. So there would have to be a reason for that to occur. Perhaps an ambient radiation that creates a mild sense of euphoria, this combined with the ability to conjure up realities based on thoughts exclusively creates realities that are pleasant, pleasurable, and alleviate concerns. Once inside, the reality is shaped by the person's conscious thoughts too, however, with even a strong enough desire to leave being facilitated. As mentioned, leaving the Nexus is possible, and you will reappear in the standard universe at any point that was or will be along the Nexus's journey at any time. But if the Nexus truly is timeless, then a part of you, in theory, will forever remain there. I'll also mention that this echo effect may be a result of the transporter beam involuntarily pulling someone out of the Nexus itself, as it did with the crew of the Lakul, which could explain why Kirk and Picard were able to leave in full without experiencing any other side effects. But. I think that's a bit convoluted and never made it on screen, so a time echo makes kind of more sense to me. As for the Nexus's appearance and the damaging effects around the wave itself, we see that openings into subspace are seldom without turbulence and high levels of space-time energies, such as gravitational forces and temporal issues. Wormholes are perfect examples of this, exhibiting both of these. It's because of this and the reality-bending effects inside the Nexus that I assume the Nexus is a form of aperture to a deep subspace realm combined with some form of radiation that pushes thoughts into a more chillax state. Either that or the Q did it because they wanted to create a form of heaven where they could drop their favourite mortals, I don't know. But that about sums up my theory on what exactly the Nexus energy ribbon is. Honestly, I don't know, and Apocrypha on the subject is equally as vague, but the idea of the Nexus is an intriguing one. Perhaps it could be literally a gateway to an afterlife, or the basis for numerous cultural ideas of a paradise. Certainly much more mysterious than simply describing it as a subspace tear emitting high gravitational and temporal energy. Thanks for watching this video on the Nexus Energy Ribbon, and let me know if you've your own theory as to what it is or if you've encountered any others. Theories, not Nexuses. It's a Trek mystery I'm genuinely intrigued by. So, thanks again for watching. I've been Rick. Thanks again and goodbye.